Hello lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. I need to redo some power supply leaves that I did a very long time ago. So I thought that I would film myself doing it and just have fun with it. Okay, so here we go. This is how you can <laughs> modify a power supply to fit your electronic projects. Step one, safety goggles. Well, I guess step zero would be Turn on your soldering iron. Um, and then step two, safety goggles. Step three, tin the tip. Um, I like to use these copper sponges um, because I don't have to deal with water. Sometimes if the sponge isn't totally wet, it'll burn. Um, yeah, so this is my preference. And I stick it inside of a tape uh, dispenser or tape roll to hold it in place. So you want to tin the tip so that the soldering iron tip is nice and shiny and keep tinning it until it gets really shiny. Um, it's been a second since I've used mine so I think the tip has been really dirty. So this is going to take a second to clean. Okay, that's decent. And I'm gonna need a new tip soon. This is a really old soldering iron. <gasps> On one side was doing better than the other. I'm gonna rotate it so I get this other side. Just gonna add a ton of solder to both sides. And I don't like how this is moving around, but okay. All right, so that's good enough. So the first thing that I need to do is remove the old wires that I attached, which I'm gonna do just by heating up the joint. So if this is your first time modifying a power supply, what you want to do is just cut the end of the cable off and then um, strip the wires so that you expose the metal leads like so. That was kind of hard to see. Um, the, um, on an AC to DC power supply, meaning that the input is alternating current AC and the output is direct current or DC. Um, the leads, there's not really um, positive and negative for AC, but there is for DC. And so what you'll want to do is use a multimeter, if you have one, to check the output of these. Um, make sure you use an appropriately rated multimeter for the current output. Um, the other thing that you can do is, oh, foo, I should have paid attention to this. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, so one of the wires will be labeled with a dashed line, and I'm pretty sure that that one is the negative side, um, but not positive. So I'm going to get my handy dandy multimeter. And of course I can't plug it in. So you know what? I am just gonna trust myself that I remember what this is. And if it's opposite, that's okay. So, all right, here we go. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> it's very silly. Okay, so the other thing that I would recommend is heat shrink tube, yay! Okay, so um, find the, um, cut a length of heat shrink tubing um, this might be a little long, but that's okay. And then you put it over the wire first before you do any soldering. Um, since I want to plug this um, into a servo, uh, I want these kind of flat ends. It's also really nice for breadboards. Again, make sure your breadboard or whatever um, thing that you are plugging it into is rated for the current and voltage of the power supply. Um, so I just cut a couple of um, male 
jumper wires. And what I'm going to do, um, I align them so that they the wires are parallel. And then I twist them together like that. And then this is where we bring back our soldering iron. So we're going to heat the joint and just apply some solder to it to make a nice solid electrical connection. So the twisting acts as both a mechanical um, and an electrical connection, but the solder just really solidifies that. Um, note that solder is not a mechanical connection, so um, be very gentle when you're pulling on any of the solder joints that you make, because solder is not super strong. It's better than nothing, but it's not super strong. And again, I like to just keep my tip nice and shiny. So we're going to add it to the... Okay, so once you have that, um, you can add your heat shrink tubing. And this is where I realized I should have gotten a lighter also. Um, but sometimes I also just use the soldering iron. So before it gets pretty warm. Um, so if I bring the soldering iron close, it might heat up. If I touch it, if I touch it, it does a little bit. <sighs> and I'm going to rotate it to get the other side. I think I used heat drink tubing. That was a little too big. So we'll come back to that. Um, cool, number two. Um, this one should be a little bit better size. That was the only um, red bit that I had, so we will make do. I'm going to crack up if I got the labeling wrong. I'm pretty sure the wire that is labeled is the negative one, but definitely double check that because it has been a hot second since I have done this. But that's what the interweb is for. Just look things up. Okay, so again, twist the wires together. You can hold them in place while we solder. Whoopsies, that didn't work very well. Excuse me, please. Let's try this again. Since we're not dealing with any electronic components, it doesn't really matter. Um, how long we heat the heat the wires. Okay, and we're gonna tin the tip again. Maybe one more time. Oh, this tip is getting down. Should use it more frequently. Okay. And then again, we pull the heat shrink tubing over the solder joint. This one is a little tight. And we pull the heat shrink tubing over the solder joint. Okay, that's about midway. Let's see if the soldering iron will work on this one. I bet it will. The lighter is definitely better than this, but in lieu of an alternative heat source, of course, always watch out for your little fingers. Soldering irons get very hot. Although to be fair, I am still of the mind that hot glue guns are more dangerous than soldering irons when it comes to getting burned. And believe me, I've been burned by both. But the hot glue, if you get hot glue on your fingers, I got it on the side of my finger one time. I've got it on the, on the tips of my fingers a lot, and that's usually totally fine. But the tips of my finger is a lot more resilient. So, yeah. I'm going to tin the tip. Okay. And there we have it. We're done. So tin the tip one more time, and then clean it off. I'm going to turn the 
this off and I'll show you my handiwork. Okay, so we have two DC leads now with breadboard attachments at the end. Yay! And I have this one is pretty well secure, but I'm going to need to take a lighter to this one and shrink it more so it um, provides um, some stability to the solder joint and so that it covers all of the electrical connections. Um, well, except for these. Remember, you don't want to ever close the circuit. Okay, all right. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions about soldering. Yay! Happy making, friends. Bye!